Now we're going to take a deeper dive into the debate over immigration and the border. It's a debate that's heating up fast, and we're joined by Republican Congresswoman Maria Elvira Salazar of Florida. Congresswoman Salazar, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Terry, for having me. So you were part of the delegation of House Republicans who, who went to the southern border this week. Tell me about what you saw, what troubled you. Well, uh, thousands and thousands of Central American children uh, being detained in this very cl clean, very nice facilities, but nonetheless, God knows what those children went through in order to get to the United States-Mexican border. I'm very concerned about the traffickers, the coyotes, and the false hopes uh, that uh, the traffickers are selling to these people. They're peddling that you can come to America, I can put you through, and that is, uh, we need to solve this. Not only Republicans or um, or Democrats, everybody. Americans need to come to term and solve the problem at the border. Well, let's talk about that. How, how do you think the Biden administration should be leading on this, going back to the Trump policy, dismantling the asylum process, the, the zero tolerance policy of family separation that led to so many children still separated from their families? Well, you know what I think we should do is we should sit at the table, the Democrats, Republicans, and independents across the aisle and all over the country, and put an end to the immigration reform problem of the immigration problem that we have. As you know, President Biden has promised uh, this immigration bill that what what. Uh, um, makes me a little bit uh, um, upset is that we are, that the Democrats are promising um, um, false illusions to my community. So I believe that it's time for both parties to sit, to, to sit, come together and explain in which way, explain to my Hispanic community in which way we can give some dignity to those people who are here and who have lived in the shadows for more than 10, 20 years, and to those who are trying to come in, but they're trying to come in, come in breaking the law. And in neither, well, neither side, tell me. Fair, no, thank you very much. Let's talk about, about but what's happening tomorrow? The House of Representatives is going to be voting on two measures tomorrow, one of them offering a path to citizenship for the dreamers, those who were brought to our country as children. The other establishing a path to legal status to more, for more than one million farm workers. So both of these measures, you know, it's an incremental step-by-step -step process. They, they got bipartisan support in the last Congress. Uh, you, you're suggesting they won't be uh, supported this time around. Will you be voting for either of those bills tomorrow? Well, I have two concerns. You are taking care of the DACA kids and you're taking care of the agricultural workers. But what happens with those people who are in the middle? You have millions of people that are not DACA, who are their parents that are, don't have TPS, and they are not uh, picking up jalapeno peppers in Southern California. You have mm. to give some legality, some dignity to those people who are in the middle. And for instance, when you talk to me about DACA, I'm thinking about the parents. Because when you talk DACA and you don't talk about the parents, then you are putting those parents in a position where you have to save your child, but at the same time abandon him or her in order to save them. So I'm talking about 11 million people who it's true that they broke the law, they should not be here, but the system allowed them to stay. And at the same time, then the Democratic, I'm just giving you facts. And then the Democratic Party promised in 2009 under President uh, Obama that he was going to give within his first 100 days immigration reform law, and he didn't do it. And he had both houses and the presidency. Mm. Now we see that President Biden is, is promising the same thing. And that's when I come in and I say, stop giving false hopes to my community. Let's come to the table and let's give dignity to those 11 million people that include the AGs and include the DACA and their parents and everybody else who has not committed a crime, who has been here for more than five years, who, uh, um, who has paid taxes and who is working and helping our economy. So you see, well, and on top of that, we need to then fix the asylum system, which is being um, profited from and it's being abused by the coyotes. So this is a very complicated issue. That's why it's very easy to promise something and then at the end not deliver. And it sounds like like you are offering up a, a real alternative plan. It does include protections for, for dreamers among that. And, and thank you for laying that out for us. Uh, but do you see... I am offering, room? let me just interrupt, I'm offering dignity. What I'm offering is the art of the possible. I'm offering uh, to bring those people out of the shadows, the ones who TPS and the, everybody that, who's been here for more than five years and does not have a criminal record. 
right? So if you bring them out of the shadow and you give them dignity so they can continue raising their American children, they can continue working and paying taxes. And then if they want to become Americans after 10 years, they can do so. Because you know what is, what's so interesting and fascinating that what I am offering is what the Hispanic community wants. You know, the, those people who are in the shadows, that's why they want. But then we have the Democrats who are insisting always it's either all or nothing. Then, you know, they have to, we need to give a path to citizenship. Well, maybe that will come in the future, but right now we need to give them dignity. And right now we need to solve the problem of the border because you know what's happening? The urgent is, is not letting us see the important. Once again, we have a, a crisis at the border. And then that is taking away from the fact that we got to give dignity to those 11 million people who've lived here and who've been waiting since Obama. All you see right. what I'm saying? It, so it's a I lot do. more complicated. I do. I, I do. It is complicated. It does seem, however, you talked about the Democrats. The Republican Party has has radicalized on this issue. Senator Lindsey Graham, for example, has been a Republican who's worked on bipartisan immigration proposals in the past, but now post-Trump, who did radicalize the issue for the Republicans. Let, let's listen to something Senator Graham said today. Biden has lost control of the U.S.-Mexican border. Until he regains control by implementing policies at work, it's going to be very hard to do the dreamers or anybody else. Why? Because after the things I named, if you add to the list of inducements, legalizing anybody under these circumstances will lead to even more illegal immigration. Well, he, he seems well, yeah. to be saying that. I, 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 I saw you nodding there. He seems to be saying Congress can't move forward on anything on immigration right now. Uh, you, you said stop the madness. And uh, the substantial majority of Americans want to do something for the DACA recipients, those dreamers. And but you go, you go back to the DACA. We're over that. Yes, DACA is going to have whatever they deserve because those were kids. But let's move on. What happens with the parents? What happens with the TPS? What happens with those people that are not DACA, they're not parents, and they don't have TPS? What happens with that as an immense amount of people? And I repeat, they're illegals. They broke the law. Yes, but the system allowed them to stay. So those are the people that the, the, the Democratic Party has been has been telling them and giving them false illusions since 2009, as I explained to you. So it's time for the Democrats not not to give, not to offer any more illusions or not to play with our community any longer, but sit with the Republicans and see in which way we can give dignity to those people who who are who are part of the 11 million people, including right. DACA, because every. Fair time you talk about DACA, you're leaving out a lot of millions of people that sound and look like me and that want Fair dignity enough. and that are here and they want to help the American economy. Fair enough. Let's hope uh, Democrats and Republicans come to the table in good faith, where I know that you yes. will be there. Congresswoman Maria yes. Salazar, thanks very much. Thanks to you. Thank you, sir. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.